Bring out your books. Show us your goods. Expose your shelf. Shelf exposure from 49th Shelf. that were written by people who were going along their merry way, doing something completely different, not writing at all, other thing, other thing, other thing, other thing, and then late in life, they wrote a book. It's sad for, for people who love painting, but it's really happy for readers. And I love just the dear little details of this book, and also that it's written from her child's point of view, which she never lost, even though she was and she wrote it. It's a story of innocent infatuation between a young woman and a slightly older woman. Very um, innocent in that it turns into a story of utter treachery. And it also has an amazing sense of geography. The turbulence of the rivers and the, the landscape become the turbulence and the landscape of the heart. It is to a memoir of um, going up the BC coast to Alaska in midlife. Um, Jill Frame was before that and remains now, I think this is her only book, a family therapist. This is an exquisite travelogue, again, inner and outer, and I'm working on a similar thing right now, so I really enjoy reading that. But that's these three books. They're all written by people who um, were not really writers, never thought they were going to be writers, and then suddenly, sometimes at the age of 60, Please would you show us a book that was written more than 25 years ago. The Wind on the Heath. It's a gypsy anthology and it's edited by John Sampson. My grandmother was a um, Scottish club wearing fortune teller and uh, I don't know, I just feel some kind of kinship with that whole idea of traveling under the wind and rain and the hedges. Show us please your most recent book purchase. It's Anne-Marie MacDonald's Fall on Your Knees. And I know everybody uh, has already read this book long before I have, but it's new to me and I just thought it was an amazing um, balance of intricate storytelling and genius literary um, prose. Show us a book that it's a co-authored title. Getting to Yes, Negotiating Agreement Without Giving In by Roger Fisher and William Urey. I tend to um, go uh, through the model of people in my life who would negotiate by yelling and screaming, I thought, this has to end. I have to learn how to do this. Show us a book that begins with the letter S. Sausage. It's got homemade sausage with wilted leeks in it. It's got tagine and it's got all manner of, you know, goats and every other animal. Oh! Show us a book considered for adults that you'd encourage your children to read. My kids are sick of me never showing up about a dictionary of word roots and combining forms by Dante Boro. Gram comes from writing and finesse comes from a window. And I just love reading all these things. It just suits me. It is more tingly, right to my fingertips. Caracol is a bit of flesh. Who knew? Show us the name of a book that you have lent out but have yet to get back. When I was in my 20s, I went to Shakespeare Company in Paris and I wrote a book called Where is Mario? And here's a tatty remnant of it that I still possess. But I've lent a perfectly pristine and complete copy to somebody with the express instructions that's my last one. But I would lend it to them on pain of death uh, as long as they give it back to me. Haven't heard a word since. Where is, where is Mario? <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get that book back. That would be good. Show us your most self-conscious book. Myra Kalman's The Principles of Uncertainty. We're unselfconscious all the time in that we're not conscious of the real self buried in the underground streams beneath the social mass. But this somehow mainlines it right to that 
um, the real vulnerable self. Please show us your most joyful book. It's written by a guy called Captain Bob Sabatino, who stapled it together himself and sells copies of it. And he would go and find um, abandoned key lime groves full of weeds and make key lime pie and try to sell it. And he just did a whole bunch of things like that. He would take people out and leave the boat to go fishing and give them a couple of dollars. And he finally figured out how to do this in a way where every day is, in fact, Saturday, and he makes a living down there just doing whatever he damn well feels like.